Hey everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about exactly what I would do if I had to learn coding from absolute zero all over again. If you haven't done so already, I would highly, highly recommend watching these two videos before this one or directly afterwards, um, especially the truth about coding one. It will really like prepare your mind going into this one and clear up a lot of misconceptions and hopefully put your mind more at ease. And then the other video obviously just goes over like why you should learn to code. Maybe it will serve as like a little bit of motivation or just provide some kind of net positive to you in some way. So a quick overview of what's going to be covered in this video. Uh, I'm just going to talk about which programming language I think you should learn first and why, what materials I would recommend you use and why those specific materials, and finally how to go about studying and practicing. And I'll, I'll kind of talk about the mindset you should take on uh, while you're actually learning to code. So in the end, after you implement everything I talk about here, you should have a basic understanding of your language of choice as well as how to code in general general, and then you'll have a couple of projects that you can put on your resume that might look something like this. So if you're ready to learn how I would personally relearn how to code from scratch, go ahead and smash the like button three times and let's get started. So first, starting with the language, if I had to start over from scratch and I didn't know anything, I would probably learn Python first. The reason for this is the syntax is relatively simple and a lot of those kind of advanced things and advanced topics that you find in some programming languages have kind of been abstracted out of Python. So you can really just focus on programming itself and gaining an intuition for how to write code and go about doing things. You can also do quite a bit with Python. Uh, of course, you can do just scripting in general. You can do some web development with Django, and there's a lot of machine learning libraries that you can use with it as well. Like Python's pretty popular for machine learning. Obviously, you can go with another language, but I would just recommend learning Python. It doesn't really matter which language you learn first, because when you have to, when you have a need to learn another one, you'll you'll kind of already have the basics of programming down, and it's just a matter of like picking up syntax for that new language. So yeah, getting into it, I would. I would recommend learning Python first. So in terms of the actual material I would recommend, I would strongly recommend using Code with Masha's Python tutorial. He has a he has a free version of this on YouTube. It's quite good. 22 million views and 99% likes. It's quite it's quite a good video. Um it's really well organized and it goes through like a lot of different things on Python. It teaches you like all the basics like variables and flow control and functions and all of those things. And at the very end he kind of goes through three different projects here like an automation project, a machine learning project, and then a, a web application slash website project. I actually used his whole course when I was doing my computer science bachelor's degree at WGU. I used his machine learning component as well as the website slash Django module to complete my capstone for my, my bachelor's degree in computer science. And it turned out really well, passed really fast, and it was good to go. And he also has a, um, so there's this like complete free one. It's like six hours long and he has a paid version of this. It's slightly more organized like this, as you can see, it just kind of depends on how you want to deal with it. I actually bought this and I, I used the paid version for my for my capstone when I was actually learning Python the first time. The reason I kind of recommend Code with Mosh for things is I've done like a lot of tutorials in my life, like a lot of coding tutorials. And some of them are like pretty good, like Travis e Media is, is quite good. But for some reason, I just really like Code with Mosh's material. It's super curated and really organized like really, really well. And he gives a lot of real world nuance in it that it's hard to get from tutorials. And I just really like it. So I'd recommend it. He has like a lot of free stuff on YouTube. So just check it out. If you can't find it on YouTube, like check out like codewithmosh.com. He has like a bunch of like little modules in there too that are pretty affordable. I think they're like 20 bucks or something like this. Uh, but yeah, check out the free version on YouTube. Highly recommend using this. And then in terms of studying and practicing, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you like, first of all, like really take your time when you go through it. For example, don't like blitz through this. Like if you don't understand like one portion, like it's okay to take longer to complete one module than the next module, whether or not, you know, you're using the YouTube and the chapters or or you're using like his, his paid one. Just take your time and don't like completely like blitz through it and feel like you have to finish it like soon. Like if you look at the YouTube, you see it's like six hours long, but this is probably like, probably like two semesters of, of programming in here, to be honest. It, it's, it's curious like quite quite well and like condensed down so don't feel like you have to like finish this in like a week or something especially if you're new it will probably take you some time to get through it so absolutely just like take your time as you as you go through it and as you're going through the material this is like super important like don't try to memorize like every little thing you come across when you're introduced to like a new command or like a new syntax or something don't get stressed out and try to memorize things like don't memorize like anything just do your best to like understand what you're being presented and try to implement 
implement yourself and, and just do your best to understand it. And then when you feel like you understood what's in like that lesson, then just like move on to the next one and then do the same thing. Go through the material, follow what he's doing, implement to yourself and just try to understand what's happening and don't try to memorize everything. But we do understand the stuff that we're doing or we try to anyway. And that's what makes it easy to go from one programming, programming language to another programming language. Like when you learn that first one, if you understand everything in there, it's like infinitely more easy to like understand those same concepts in like, you know, C sharp, for example, or Java or whatever else, whatever other language you're jumping to. So take your time, you know, get a nice coffee, make yourself comfortable, get a nice snack or whatever you need to do. And just take your time and then just understand the concepts. And when you get tired, just stop doing it for the day and then pick it up tomorrow and just kind of work through this, work through this course until you get to the end, start working on the projects, maybe complete a couple of them, and then you'll be good to go. Another thing I want to say, like when I was first learning programming, I really like learned hard in Java is where most of my learning was. There's a lot of stuff I didn't understand. And I, I found I found what helped me is kind of like rewriting the code like many, many times, like kind of a short, getting a short program like from the book or something and like rewriting it many, many times. And like every time I would like rewrite it from scratch and like rerun it, I would learn like a little bit more. I'd like understand like a little bit more and it like really helped me a lot. So for example, like something you could do, um, I'm just gonna, you can do this with the YouTube version because these are essentially the same thing, but I'll just um, go to his like course here. Like what I would do is, is for example, like pick one of these like modules or something. He always like writes code in the modules and like runs the code. So say, say you, you're getting stuck on like comparison operators or something. You could do this module and like redo it like three or four or five times or something if you need to, because you'll learn like a little bit more every time then you'll get to a point where you, you kind of feel like you, you're like, okay, I understand it's boring now. And then when you get to that point, then you can kind of like move on to the next one. I feel it's good to like reach a point of like understanding before learning like too, too many new things. Cause for example, if you have a, if you have a, a knowledge of zero and you try to like learn, you know, 10 things on top of it, it's like zero plus 10. It tends to be like pretty difficult, but if you have like already foundational knowledge of, of nine things and you need to learn one additional thing, learning nine plus one is, is more easy or N plus one is more easy if that makes sense and one last thing i would strongly recommend doing this like maybe shortly after you start doing code with mosh maybe like i don't know like 20 minutes in or something like this i'll definitely learn how to use the debugger in vs code it's pretty simple i'll give you like a really short demo of it right now just so you know like what i'm talking about so basically like with the debugger it allows you to kind of pause the execution of your program to where you can kind of inspect things with your human eyes at a slow pace and like kind of understand what's going on and this will give you like a better intuition of the flow of your program or programs in general. So for example, what I mean, this is like a, this is like a super, super simple Python program. Anyway, what, what happens like this, this string gets assigned to this variable, this string gets assigned to this variable. And then these two things print out as you might guess. So for example, if I just say like run and then start run without debugging, the program runs and then these things print to the screen immediately. And then the program just finishes. But say you want to kind of inspect things and let your program run slowly. Uh, so you can kind of look at what's happening and wrap your head around it. So basically how Python executes, like you'll learn this in the code with Mosh tutorial, but it, it kind of the uh, interpreter, I suppose, just goes from top to bottom and executes stuff like all along the way. So for example, you can click, you can click on the side here and you can set a stop point and tell the interpreter, I want to stop here and inspect things. So you can make this little dot, you can say run, and then you can say start debugging. And then the program runs again. And you can see this yellow thing here kind of pauses on top of this. And this line didn't execute yet, but it's the next line that's going to be executed. And if you hover the mouse over my name, like nothing comes out. But if you step over this, this line of code is now executed. And then you can see inside of my name now it contains Josh. And then you can see the variables over here. My name contains Josh. Same with this one. The interpreter is now here, right? It didn't execute yet. So I'll step over where you can step into. Now you can see your name is over here, Susan. The reason debugging is like really good is because it kind of allows you to guess what's going to happen next. And then like check your understanding of the language and like what the different syntax does and like the flow control, it kind of lets you be able to learn the language like a little bit better. So for example, you can probably guess what's going to happen here. My name is space and then whatever is inside this my name. So we'll step over this and we can see down below only this one gets printed again stops here and we can print the last line and it goes and you might look
look at this and be like, you may, you might be like, why, why do you need this here? It's like too freaking simple. There's only like four lines. But when you start getting into like more complicated things, like functions, for example, and like instantiation of objects and these kind of more intermediate and advanced topics, the the flow control can get kind of weird. And it like you can run the program and like some it, something will just like happen and you won't know what happened. But if you can like pause it and then have the ability to debug and kind of step through it at your own pace, you can kind of gain an intuition uh, on programming in general and the flow of your code. So I would recommend maybe after like the first couple modules with Code with Moss, just like go on YouTube and search like Python debugger or something like that. Super, it's super, super, super important to know how to use the debugger. I'm getting on like a little bit of a tangent here, but I there's like a data structures and algorithms to course for the WG CompSci program. It's it gets quite complicated. And I, I just assumed like everyone know, knew how to use the debugger at that point. Cause I was using it like immediately, like when I started working on that program, cause it got like so freaking complex, but I went to Reddit and there's like a bunch of people that I guess didn't even know the debugger exists or they didn't know how to use it. And I'm like, I don't even know how you managed to get this far without using the debugger. It's like super important. You can like really inspect things as your program goes and it just helps you understand everything. And with coding and programming, like understanding is like paramount, like over absolutely everything like memorization of syntax and all of that, that good stuff anyway just just watch this video you'll you'll get what i'm talking about that's pretty much how i would go about things if i had to start over from scratch i kind of had to like figure this a lot of the stuff out on my own and like uh, eventually when youtube got big i could start like youtubing things and like learn everything like in a more easy fashion but yeah that's what i do luckily you know code with mosh and all these other free cool resources exist these days so yeah if you enjoyed this content please don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss my videos. I try to upload every day. I don't know how long it's gonna last before like my brain explodes or something, but it's been really fun. I'm enjoying myself. I, I try to upload a lot. So yeah, please consider liking and subscribing. I also have a Patreon if you feel like supporting me. I wanna say like, leave some comments uh, if you have any suggestions or criticism of what I said or did or there's errors or anything like that. I read and respond to like everybody's comments and I'm sure if you have something to add, you can like help other people who are watching this video too. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.